Hello and welcome back to Titan Sports. I'm Eddie Brueger. How's it going? I'm Noah Scobio. Hey everyone, I'm Francisco Molina. And I'm Colin Costigan. We're here to get the ball rolling to provide you with your weekly sports updates. Welcome to Titan Sports. Jake Paul and Mike Tyson will face each other in a boxing match July 20th at AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. The main event of the card will be available on Netflix. At the time of the fight, Tyson will be 58 years old and Paul will be 27 years old. Tyson said in a statement, quote, It's a full circle moment that will be beyond thrilling to watch. As I started him on his boxing journey on the undercard of my fight with Roy Jones, and now I plan to finish him. Tyson has a career record of 56 and 6 with 44 knockouts, and Paul has a career record of 9 and 1 with 6 knockouts. Paul is coming off of back to back first round knockouts. It is still unclear whether the fight will be classified as a pro fight or a friendly exhibition. Francis Ngannou suffers his second loss in professional boxing career as Anthony Joshua silences the hype, knocking him cold in the second round. The former UFC heavyweight champion became unconscious from the hit and was administered oxygen after regaining his senses. Ngannou took a horrible beating last Friday night in Saudi Arabia, getting knocked down twice before the final blow. As it was a short match and a scary knockout, Ngannou posted after the fight saying, quote, Sorry guys, I let you all down. Today was a bad day in the office, but tomorrow will be another day. Thank you for all the love, end quote. The former MMA fighter has gotten a lot of hype around his professional boxing career. His first match being against ESPN's number one heavyweight, Tyson Fury. Although losing that match to a split decision, fans were excited about his future as he dropped Fury in the third round. With two losses in his first two matches, it's hard to say how his next match will turn out. Respect was shown for both sides. Although it was a knockout victory, Joshua sees the potential for Francis Ngannou. After the fight, Joshua said, quote, I told him he shouldn't leave boxing. He can do well. Remember, he's two fights in, and he fought the best, end quote. The hype and fan base surrounding the former UFC champion. Another opponent may be in the mix, as they are eager to see him get his first professional win. Superstar Luka Doncic views his historic night as another day in the office, breaking the record of consecutive triple-doubles with at least 20 points surpassing legends of Oscar Robinson and future Hall of Famer Russell Westbrook is not just so glamorous for the Don, as he is more focused on winning. The Dallas Mavericks got the win that night against the Miami Heat 114-108 to at home. Doncic recorded 35 points along with 11 assists and 11 rebounds. The rim seemed wider for the Don as he went 12-24 on the field, 7-13 of 13 from distance. This performance was much needed after losing their previous three games. After the game, Don Chinch was more thrilled about the result rather than his stats. Seeing it's great, especially when it comes with a win, his mind seems to be more focused on racking dubs as, quote, that's all that really matters right now, end quote. The Mavericks are in a playoff contention with a record of 35 and 28, while above over 500. Luka Magic has been putting up video game numbers over the past 23 games, averaging 36 points, 10 rebounds, and 10 and a half assists. Along with the fifth consecutive triple-double with at least 30 points, this performance makes it his 71st triple-double in his career. With former MVP Joel Embiid injured, we can see a new MVP this year, all fingers pointing at the Don, that is. The Titans recently played the USC Trojans in a baseball game last Tuesday night. Here's Matt Rosoff with the news. The Cal State Fullerton Titans returned home to Goodwin Field to take on the USC Trojans last Tuesday night. Both teams had struggled to put wins on the board prior to this game as the Titans had lost three straight games and the Trojans had dropped their last four contests in a row. Titans infielder Marcos Rosales kicked off the scoring in the home half of the first inning, hitting a solo home run to left center field, his first home run of the season. USC tied the score at one on a Titans wild pitch in the fourth inning, but the Titans promptly retook the lead in the bottom half of that inning on a two-run double from catcher Max Ortega. The two teams traded runs from innings five to six, which included the game-tying run for the Titans on a throwing error by USC catcher Jacob Galloway. 
USC scored the go-ahead run in the eighth inning with an RBI single by Dean Carpentier off of reliever Ryan Falks to take the lead for good 6-5. The Trojans bullpen locked down the Titans offense over the final three innings, not allowing any hits, coming away with a 6-5 victory. However, the Titans losing streak did not last long as they turned the tide during the weekend at home where they completed a three-game sweep against the University of Jacksonville. The Titans hope to ride this momentum to another victory on Wednesday versus Ohio State at Goodwin Field beginning at 6 p.m. In other CSUF sports news, the Titans also hosted the CSUF and LBSU tournament this last weekend. The Titans were scheduled for five games, but only played four because of a rainout. The Titans started the weekend with a 4-1 win against Toledo. Megan Delegadillo made history with her 15th stolen base in the season. She now holds the stolen base record for career stolen bases in the Big West with 122. In Game 2 of the tournament, the Titans would shut out Princeton by a final of 5-0. Stacy Chamber would go five innings, allowing two hits and striking out seven batters. The Titans would lose Game 3 of the tournament to SDSU by a final of 5-4. On the final day, the Titans would bounce back with a 1-0 win. Haley Rainey threw her fifth complete game of the season and recorded her 300th career strikeout. Softball begins conference play up at UC Davis this weekend. The Titans have a record of 14 and 10 heading into this weekend. Alrighty, Titans, don't go anywhere. We will be right back with our roundtable discussion right after the break. off with Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. We know it's uh, what it's July 20th. Um, I'm very excited for this fight because, you know, obviously Mike Tyson is probably the goat of boxing. I mean, I, I would argue that for sure. Uh, do you think at 58 years old, because that's how old he'll be by the time the fight happens, do you think he still has it in him to beat Jake Paul? That's a great question. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, Mike Tyson's name will always be respected as one of the greats in boxing. However, that's a really, really large gap of age between these two. And it's not like Jake Paul hasn't been hitting the gym, gym either. If you look at his physique, if you look at how he's been competitively yes. going against these fights, he's actually putting in work for the sport. Yeah, at first, is. I thought it was a publicity stunt, which it was, right? Mm -hmm. But it seems that he's been able to kind of gain the respect of more and more box, uh, boxing fans. And I'm really interested to see how this fight will go out. However, though, if Mike Tyson's impact with those punches can mm -hmm. still be shown then he has no shot mm -hmm. because it's been historically known that mike tyson gives a harder punch than anyone else in history so it all, it's all going to come down to the impact and force he has left in the tank and if he can do that then i think paul's toast yeah i think iron mike still has it in him but here's the thing with me i want to focus on his physical uh condition his endurance and speed not just only for him but for jake and can Jake Paul sustain the punches that you said, the impact that he has? I don't know if you saw those videos where he's punching the heck out of his uh, sparring uh, trainer and like giving them like concussions and all the other stuff. Yeah. So I would love to see like a good fight, but we never know with this huge age gap, like you said. Yeah, and what I've noticed, like, because Mike Tyson, I know about 10, 15 years ago, he was very out of shape. Like, you saw him in the Hangover movies, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> he was a little bit tubby, but, you know, he was retired. Yeah. He was older. But we've seen in, the, like, the last five years that progress. He's really trimmed down now, and he's still keeping at it. Like, he's still, for his age, he's incredibly fit, and he still has that, like, he still has, like, the physique, I believe. That my only thing is he's a much different person now than he used to be before, and right. I think that mm -hmm. might take away some of his competitive edge a little bit. I feel like he's doesn't like he's still gonna have those strong punches, 
I just, I'm not sure he has it like he used to. And at 58 years old, it's just crazy to see. I feel like I'm watching a, a real life Rocky Balboa film. Like, like it's like some like 60 year old's gonna try to fight this up at like this. <laughs> right, I mean, right. Jake Paul's not a boxer, but I mean, he's trying to like, I don't know. I just, I feel like if he does, like if Jake Paul wins, then then all the conversations are gonna be about how like, oh, we have to start taking him seriously as a boxer. And, you know, personally, I'm not ready to hear that because it like Iron Mike Tyson, I really, I hope he wins. That's my, uh, but, I want to hear uh, from Eddie here. What do you think about this mm. fight? It's, it's yeah, very I, interesting. I'm excited. I agree with everything that's been said so far. I think if it's just a, a friendly exhibition, maybe they might give the win to Jake Paul. But I would like to see a real fight, and I would, I'd bet money on Tyson. I think I'm going to go for Mike Tyson on this yeah. one. Yeah, but then it also gives a question. It's like, okay, what's the state of boxing fine? Where, where, where are they at? Right, yes. you know, we're looking at the UFC who's just constantly growing in their marketing and they're constantly giving us the fights we want to see. But boxing, it's almost like if this, if Paul wins, then where do we go from here, right? Or exactly. if Tyson wins, does this finally eliminate all these influencers trying to find themselves in the ring? <laughs> like at what point do we yeah. stop like promoting or supporting these fights, right? So I'm really interested to see what the future of boxing will be after this match. Yeah, the thing with me is I want to see if this is a catch weight fight they both fighters agree at a certain weight at a certain weight class to fight because uh, you could tell Tyson weighs more than Paul right now. Yeah. yeah, and I mean, I'm really just interested to see if he's still kind of got that magic in him. Mm -hmm. And speaking of magic, I know you talked about the Luca magic. We have to mm -hmm. talk about the Mavs a little bit. Um, when it comes to Luca, I have different opinions. As a player, I think he's a fantastic player, potential face of the league. I just I don't like players that constantly complain and like beg for foul calls a lot. So I feel like he is a little bit of a whiner sometimes, but I'm not going to deny his greatness at the same time. I mean, he's leading his team in points, rebounds, assists, and even steals, which is crazy. But my concern with the Mavs and what I have to ask for you guys is how do you think they're going to face off and what looks like they're a play-in team, but potential for playoffs. They've kind of been teetering a little bit. How do you think they're going to fare off in those kind of, uh, high play or high intensity games? That's a great question. I mean, no doubt about it. In my opinion, right now, he's a front runner for the MVP mm -hmm. of the NBA this year. Mm -hmm. I mean, what he's doing with those thirty point plus triple doubles. I know that that streak for the thirty point plus just ended against the Bulls, but still phenomenal what he's been able to accomplish. Yeah. However, if you look at the aspect of the overall team, the Dallas Mavericks, yes, they have Luca. Yes, they have Kyrie, but I don't see them going that far in the playoffs. Uh, especially when LeBron and Anthony Davis love to choose when they play hard, right? So we yeah. know that they're, they're, they're this odd team. The Lakers, you can have them falling out one night, the next night they'll lose well, by 20. Well, I just 20. love that they like to take the night off against the Kings personally. Yeah, but, you of know. course you do, of course. Yeah. Uh, of course Colin loves that, yeah. right? Uh -huh. But I don't see them going far in the playoffs. Um, it's one of mm -hmm. those teams where it's like, I think that their identity for this team is just going to be showing how flashy luka has been, right? And his yeah. greatness. However, they still are missing that X factor. I mean, you're looking at two... Iron Giants over there with LeBron and Anthony and when D'Angelo has been playing well recently. So even that's just the Lakers, not including the rest of the Western Conference. I don't think they'll go that far. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the main talk of the town has been Luka Doncic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously Luka, Luka Magic, his talent is unbelievable. I want to see what a Hall of Famer point guard head coach Jason Kidd does with the whole team in general. But I also feel like Luka Doncic is similar to uh, Dirk Nowitzki. Dirk mm -hmm. Nowitzki didn't have much players around him, and he was able to capture the 2011 title. I'm not saying that the Mavs will go straight to the to the NBA title game. But I'm saying that they'll compete just like Dirk Nowitzki did back in the in the early 2000s. Yeah, realistically, what I see with the Mavs is kind of a similar problem that they've always had is that they've always had the dominant stats with Luka and everything. It's just been staying consistently. He owns certain teams in the league, and then there's also times where like in clutch games where they just can't do it. In the past few years, they've been getting beat in the playoffs. I realistically see them making it to the second round. I think they can be, uh, win. I think they like, I don't know exactly how the seedings are right now. I need to like uh, check up on that. But I do believe like if they play a team like the Suns, even though they have KD and they have like that three headed monster that's been, hasn't really gotten a chance because at least one of them has been injured at some point in the season. But I feel like teams like that, they have a really solid chance. So I could see them winning one round, but I don't see them going as far because you have two ball dominant guards. So it's like you when you have Kyrie and Luka on the same team. Sure, like you would think that's a dominant one two punch, but it's not like a Kobe or Shaq thing where you've got right. a dominant center and a dominant guard. Those exactly. almost always go hand in hand. But when you have two dominant just guards, it doesn't really work out that well. And I'm, I would that's why I was sort of really surprised that Kyrie decided to stay in the offseason. Right. But I believe that the Mavs are a good team, but they're not, I don't see them getting anywhere close to the finals. Mm -hmm. But yeah.
And now moving on to much more, moving on to our very own baseball team. Um, yeah. We know last week we were talking about that rough road trip that they had, but this past week they had a great series against Jacksonville. They dominated them, mm -hmm. and so now they're back to 500. I believe they're seven and seven now. Yeah. Um, they have a very tough opponent um, in Ohio State, which is, I mean, you know, they have about, I think Ohio State has the same record, but, you know, it's also a very tough opponent regardless that mm -hmm. the school carries a great, like, that name. So any time like that. And then they even have a three-game series against their Big West rival coming up, which is the 13-3 and three, uh, UC, uh, SD. So how do you think they're going to match up in those types of series? I think it's going to be a difficult uh, next to opponents that they're facing. However, they're coming off dominant wins. Uh, I was at those games, and let me tell you, those were some of the most boring games I've ever seen in my <laughs> life because they were dominating them so yeah. well. As a matter of fact, the, the first game of their doubleheader on Saturday ended mm -hmm. early. They were up, like, by 10 points at least, and they, they ended at the seventh because they had yeah, a doubleheader. So they were taking care of business against Jackson, uh, Jacksonville, I believe. But I think that that's what they needed for the morale of the team. Like you said, they were struggling in the tournament. And when you st struggle off in the beginning of the year like that, it can affect your play. But coming off two major wins like that, I think it's putting their head in the right space. And it's going to be confidence when it comes to Ohio State. I do believe that if they go out there with the right mindset, believing that they can win the game, I think that they can upset um, that team. However, against UCSD, that's a hard opponent. I mean, they have a really, really good record. They're going to have to really look at their roster and try to go in deep. I don't think they'll win against them. But as long as they can put up a fight, it's going to be their identity for this year. Yeah, like you said, they played a stellar play versus Jacksonville State. They actually knocked the lights out of the ball, on fire from pitching and hitting. But I want to focus on hitting. The pitching transformed for the last couple of games. A couple of players got multiple strikeouts. Um, Jason Blood has a 1.80 ERA right now, and I, think, I believe he's 2-0. So I think the pitching has the mojo, and they're, they're playing at the right time where it's a pick-me-up uh, type of feeling right now because, like you said, Big West play starts uh, Friday, March 15th, and if they can get the ball rolling, I think uh, the sky's the limit for them. Mm -hmm. And I noticed a couple players, like I mentioned Eli Lopez, he's continued with his contact. He, he's been, a couple of the games that I've been to, he's been really close to getting that first homer of the season, mm -hmm. but... He's still batting, I believe, yeah, he's still batting 370. So, like, he's getting on base. He's always finding a way to hit. Great uh, lead. I think he, I'm pretty sure he's our leadoff hitter. Great mm. uh, bat right there. And then also, uh, it's also nice to see, like, uh, Marcos Rosales, who's, like, a freshman. Mm -hmm. He's yes. batting. He's Right now, he's got 326 average with three homers and nine RBIs. And I watched one of those homers against USC. I mean, he really, like, got into that one. So, that was really nice to see. And then also, uh, Maddox Lada, he's batting. Um, 298 with a homer, but he also has 14 RBIs. So I believe he's doing his role really well. So from a few uh, star players that I've noticed on, like, at least for the offensive side, that's what you want to see, especially from your young, like a freshman that's already batting, like what would I say, 326? Like right. you like to see that early on in the season. Yeah, yeah, and it's crazy. Those three guys that you mentioned are in the top three in all statistics for baseball right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's everything that you love to mm -hmm. see out of a team like that. All right, Titans, that is all we have time for you today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Colin Koskia. Hope to see you all again soon. I'm Francisco Molina. Thank you for watching. I'm Noah Scovio. And I'm Eddie Brueger. Give us a follow on Instagram and Twitter if you haven't already, at CSUF Titan Sports, to keep you updated on all things sports.